Professor, I understand that you are looking to speak with me. Perhaps you would like some insight on how to write your next lecture? While I do have a great many ideas, it would be inappropriate to... Oh, am I mistaken? If that's the case, then what can I do for you? The ladies have complained? To you? About me? <laughs> Preposterous. <laughs> there must be some mistake. I am the heir of the noble house Gloucester. It is bred in me to treat all people with respect. Rest assured, you will not find anyone more upstanding than yours truly. Perhaps the issue is that the splendor of my noble presence is driving the ladies to distraction. If that is the crime, I do confess. I hope I've not troubled the ladies' hearts unduly. Outrageous! That's absurd! Who would dare to allege such slander? Of all the... <sighs> well... I suppose I have offered several of them the honor of dining with me. It is impossible to tell if even the most well-bred young lady is a suitable companion for me, merely by the sight of her. So, in order for us to get to know each other properly, it is appropriate that we dine together. Thus far, they have all declined, oddly enough. For some reason, they seem to be exercising some form of restraint when speaking with me. I would never insist, of course. But I will admit I have, on occasion, after a day's pause, issued repeat invitations, in the fashion and style of a gentleman. What? Ridiculous! Dinner invitations for me? A problem? The very idea. I am a perfect gentleman, the son of a noble line. I've a wit like a rapier, and it takes but a glance to see that I'm gorgeous. No, I cannot believe such a thing. Are you sure this isn't the result of some sort of scheme? It cannot be otherwise. Someone has clearly devised a conspiracy against me. Someone who envies my position, who seeks to soil my sterling reputation with foul rumors. How crude. Please, Professor, it is beneath you to fall victim to such petty and obscene tactics. I implore you to take greater care in the future. Now, if you will excuse me, I have a great deal of work to do. Farewell. Professor, have you been looking for me again? I am very busy, you know. I must insist that disruptions for light-hearted chats of this kind be kept to a minimum. <laughs> what did I tell you about falling victim to such salacious and slanderous rumors? As I've told you, there is obviously a conspiracy against me. There is no manner in which I could possibly be considered bothersome. Professor, I assure you, you have been deceived. My adversary has poisoned the hearts of these ladies against me. The plot goes deeper than I thought. But... If you truly do insist... Please understand, Professor. I am not some scoundrel out for conquest. I am attempting to fulfill my duty as heir of House Gloucester. It is my responsibility to continue our noble line by finding a suitable lady to be my wife. It is a rigorous process. My family has the very highest standards for appearance, grace, temperament, and pedigree. Typically, yes, even if others are sometimes critical of that notion. For the nobility, marriage is not merely a union of individuals. It is also a union of families. It would not benefit House Gloucester to be tied to a family of powerless commoners, would it? To achieve supremacy, it is necessary for my line to be tied to that of an influential family. That is the best path to peace and prosperity for all of Fodlan. So as you can see, the fate of the whole world rests upon my shoulders. It is nothing out of the ordinary. Those of us with noble blood are born to this duty, you know. That being said, to avoid misunderstandings, I shall restrain myself until things calm down. I would rather not cause trouble for you, after all. Ah, there you are, Professor. I didn't see you at the ball. I was wondering where you'd slipped off to. 
Everyone is waiting for you. Shouldn't you be heading back? Well, there's no need to hurry. The ball will continue a while longer. Was the noise becoming too much? It must be difficult if you are unaccustomed to high society. I say that, but I'm actually the same. After a while of excitement, I yearn for peace and quiet. Professor, rude. Just what do you think of me? There are definitely students in there making the most of things, flirting as if their very lives depended on it. But for a catch such as myself, every day is an opportunity. There's no need to appear desperate. Still, it's unexpected that the two of us would be here together, isn't it? Do you not know the legend of this place? The goddess is said to grant a special kind of blessing, unique to the day of this ball. It is said that on this day, she will honor any vow sworn between man and woman here at this tower. It's a famous legend amongst the students, which may be why I expected to find more of them here. Of course not. I would never stoop to such despicable behavior. Honestly, I forgot all about the legend until now. I'm not interested in that sort of foolishness. Though, I suppose it couldn't hurt to test it, even if it is only a legend. What do you say, Professor? Shall we swear some sort of vow together? Something that will benefit the both of us. What dream should we promise to make a reality? That's very fitting. I will remember that we made this vow here today. Well, I should head back, lest by my absence the festivities lose their luster. Well met, Professor. I trust that you have not had any complaints about me lately. Good. Please, accept my most sincere apology for any discomfort I may have caused you. I've decided that it would be inappropriate for me to continue my search for a spouse while we are at war. I expect that means you will not be receiving any more complaints. I hope that puts you more at ease. Actually, the introspection I've gained setting aside my search has motivated me to amend my conduct. Not the phrasing I choose, but you're not wrong. Selfishly pursuing my own desires caused me to behave inconsiderately. For instance, it was arrogant and rude to invite ladies to dine with me purely to evaluate them. Our experiences in battle have also given me cause to doubt certain preconceptions I once held. Previously, I had considered it a requirement for my future spouse to come from a noble line. I once thought that commoners lacked the power to influence the wider world, as history might suggest. To find a commoner who made a real impact, one has to look all the way back to Nemesis. That was my belief, at any rate. But I realized that I've actually had an influential commoner right in front of me all along. Don't you see? I'm referring to you. You may wield the power of a crest, but you are so much more than just that. You have managed to charm everyone around you, to compel them to trust and follow you. Though you may not realize it, that is no mean feat. It is altering the course of history in Fodlan. Your example puts my prior beliefs to shame. I appreciate the kind words. I have always sought to embody the ideal of nobility. That, at least, is a goal I continue to stand by. But now I know that bloodline alone is not sufficient to gauge a person's worth. I've learned much of this from you. You are humble and open-minded, despite your power and skill. That is why I, at least, find you so charismatic. Perhaps that is the wrong way to say it. What I mean is that you set an admirable example. I can only hope someday to be your equal. Of course, you had better keep an eye on me, because I can achieve anything I set out to do. For I am none other than the handsome and talented Lawrence Hellman Gloucester! <laughs> you actually came. I wasn't sure you'd find the time. You often asked me to meet with you, but this is the first time it has been the other way around. I know I gave you something of a headache. Please forgive my youthful impropriety. Now that the war is finally over, 
It seems I am able to resume my search for a suitable wife. I suppose I do, don't I? But I am not the same man I once was. Pedigree and status are no longer priorities for me. I now know that what matters most is the worth of an individual's soul. And there is only one person who calls to my heart. One whose incredible qualities outshine all others. That person is you. You'd expected this all along? I am I that predictable? <sighs> I'd hoped to surprise you. I cannot believe I've made such a terrible blunder. Even so, surely you have some reply beyond that. No, I should apologize. I've gone and made you flustered. How abominably rude. Please don't fret about it. I'm no longer the type of person to get upset over others' manners. Do you remember when I said you were charismatic? By that time, I had already become unable to imagine anyone but you as my partner. But I did not feel I was your equal. Since then, I have worked tirelessly to improve, to become a man truly worthy of you. What do you think? Have I finally managed it? <sighs> I'm so glad. To hear you say that makes all the effort worth it. In that case, please hear my humble proposal. I want nothing more than to be yours, now and for all time. Will you do me this great honor? You will? You do? Yes, uh, of course this should happen. Not even if you scoured all Fodlin could you find a partner more worthy of you. Or my name isn't Lawrence Hellman Gloucester. <laughs> <clears throat> In any case, I swear to do my utmost to make you happy. And together we will make this world a better place. <laughs> <laughs>